Hi there. Welcome to a new episode of the Bite Size Critical Realist. Today we will discuss yet another important concept in critical realism, and this is ontological emergence. But before that, let's recap what we've talked about so far. We have been following the thinking of Roy Baskar, particularly his analysis of two fundamental scientific methods, sense perception and experimental activity. And so far, we've reached some pretty important conclusions. Conclusions about human knowing and conclusions about the world. The first of these conclusions is that human knowing, including science, is an exercise of judgmental rationality. Put simply, this means that it makes sense to evaluate claims, even opposing claims, because there is an intransitive basis for evaluation. In short, ontological realism. It is also necessary and essential for us to evaluate claims because all our claims are historically and culturally conditioned, in a word, epistemically relativist. The next few conclusions we've reached from our analysis are about the world. The world that science investigates is intransitive, meaning it is autonomous of the transitive work of science. Secondly, that world is stratified, meaning it cannot be reduced merely to the empirical. That world also has the domains of the actual and the real aside from the empirical. And finally, the world that science studies is an open system. This means that unlike the experimental laboratory, there is no closure and different causes are always interacting to determine events. So far, this is the emerging critical realist view of the world. Now, critical realism makes a fifth claim about this world, that this world is emergent. Now, what do we mean by ontological emergence? I think the best way to begin talking about it is through the so-called theory of everything. Theory of everything is a hypothetical, single, all-encompassing, coherent theoretical framework of physics that supposedly will fully explain and link together all physical aspects of the universe. Finding this theory of everything is one of the major unsolved problems in physics. Now, the theory of everything is a form of reductive materialism. Reductionism is a tendency in our mind to reduce everything into its simpler components. A cheeky way of referring to this is nothing buttery. And the reason is, for reductionism, the whole is nothing but the sum of its parts. And that's the exact opposite of emergence. For emergence, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Here's a full-blown definition of emergence. Emergence refers to the process of constituting a new entity with its own particular characteristics through the interactive combination of other different entities that are necessary to create the new entity but that do not contain the characteristics present in the new entity. Now that sounds awfully complicated, but all we really need to do is to think of something as simple and common as water. As we know, water is made of two hydrogen and one oxygen molecule. In that sense, we can say that water is rooted in the hydrogen and oxygen molecules. But water is also emergent from these molecules and by no means is water reducible to the hydrogen and oxygen molecules that make it up. There is something qualitatively different with water. Its properties are different from the properties of the hydrogen and oxygen molecules. This is emergence. Let's talk about computers. Computers are made up of plastic, metal, silicon, and electricity. Computers are not nothing but plastic, 
metal, silicon, and electricity. Something else is going on when you put together plastic, metal, silicon, electricity in a special way. Another example of emergence is society. We cannot have society without people. Society is rooted in its individual members. And yet when individual members come together, playing different roles and interacting with one another in a special way, something new emerges, something qualitatively different. Society is not nothing but people. In all these cases, in the case of water, computer, and society, we see emergence. The whole is greater than the sum of their parts. Now, when we say that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, we're not saying that as long as you have those parts, you're going to have something qualitatively different. Here's a good example, adrenaline or epinephrine. Adrenaline is made up of four elements, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. But you're not going to end up with adrenaline just because you put together those four elements. You need 26 atoms of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon, and they have to be uniquely arranged. Only with this special relationship among the four elements, among their atoms, can we come up with something qualitatively different, like adrenaline. The critical realist concept of the open system reveals to us a world that is full of a multiplicity of causes. It shows us that there are different causes that are active in the world. Ontological emergence qualifies that claim. It discloses to us that not only are there different causes in the open system, but there also exist different types of causes, each one belonging to a distinct stratum of being. And each of these causes cannot just be reduced to the more basic causes. The jury is still out regarding the number of levels of causes in this hierarchy, but most people agree there are at least four. At the most basic, you have the physical and chemical, followed by the biological, then the psychological and the social, or the psychosocial. According to ontological emergence, the higher level causes are rooted in, but emergent, from the lower level causes. When we talk about higher order causes, we're not talking about more important causes. Rather, we're talking about more complex causes. They are made of more basic causes. The relationships between these different types of causes are characterized by, on the one hand, unilateral dependence, and on the other, emergent irreducibility. By unilateral dependence, we mean that the existence of a particular cause presupposes the existence of the more basic causes. An example of this would be life and a physical body. Without a physical body, you can't have life. So life is rooted in the physical body. But also there is a characteristic of emergent irreducibility. By this, we mean that the higher order causes are not completely determined or explained by the lower causes. While they remain subject to the laws of their nature at the lower level, their properties are distinct and irreducible. Going back to our example, living things are certainly subject to the laws of physics and chemistry. But the properties of living things remain distinct and irreducible. So according to ontological emergence, there is a hierarchy of causes that interact with one another in the open system of the world. Each level is causal in its own right and cannot be reduced to the more basic causes. This means that each level is real in its own right and is irreducible. You cannot explain the higher order causes based on the lower level causes. We know from the open system that causes interact with each other. Now that we have this hierarchy of causes, 
Here's a question for us. How does a hierarchy of causes interact and determine events in an open system? What would be the direction of causality? Would it be upward or downward? In the hierarchy of emergent causes in the open system, causality goes both ways. There is upward causality, where the more basic causes affect the more complex ones, but there is also downward causality, where the more complex causes also make a difference in the more basic ones. Here's an example. Our bodies certainly affect the way we think. It's hard for us to do intellectual work when we're feeling sick or hungry. But by sheer willpower, we are able to control our body, to restrain our appetites, or even to overcome our illness for us to be able to do work that we consider important. In short, there is both upward causality, our body affecting our mind, but there's also downward causality. Our mind can also control our body to a certain extent. So let's try to put this together. The open system tells us that there's a multiplicity of causes and they operate as tendencies. The most they do is set possibilities and limits. They do not determine events. But ontological emergence tells us that the hierarchy of causes operate both upwards and downwards. This brings us to an important concept called dual or multiple control. This means that the higher causes are not absolutely determined by the more basic causes because the higher level causes also have causal power over the lower. The more complex causes are capable of acting back on the lower order causes. A higher cause can enable or constrain the operations of the lower order cause, setting boundary conditions for its loss. The critical realist view of the world is that the world is not only an open system, but it's an open system of emergent causes. From the notion of open system, we know that causal laws are not determinants of events. It is impossible to predict all events in the open system. For this reason, there is room to conceive of things as acting autonomously. When we talk about dual or multiple control, we're actually creating a space for autonomy, for freedom.